system of laboratory protection presents Rudy Valley with John Barrymore, Lorene Tuttle, Susan Miller, and our special guest, Orson Welles. I'll give you a smile for a smile, a song for a song for a while. I'll give you a heart for a moment of life. Right from the start, we'll have a grand time. I'll give you a dream for your dream. If you make me a part of your scheme, then day by day and year by year, let's have a smile for a smile, my dear. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Rudy Valley, welcoming you to another SEAL test program. Tonight we delve briefly into one of the more harrowing aspects of the motion picture world in bringing you our impression of that strange and weird vehicle of the cinema, the horror picture. Sinister adventures befall Mr. Barrymore and myself at the hands of a mad scientist, a man with a twisted and tortured mind, a man whose diabolical schemes are limitless in their devilish invention. And whom, Rudy, did you engage to play this fiendish monster, this horrible character? Orson Welles. Hmm, typecasting. Sorry, my boy, this mad scientist sounds like a meaty role. A role for an actor. Why don't you have this weird character played by John Barrymore? It's not quite that weird. (laughs) And anyway, John, Orson Welles is particularly well-trained for this part tonight. He played Mephistopheles and Dr. Faustus. He is the eerie shadow of radio fame. What have you got to offer in the way of the fantastic? Have you uh, ever read my diary? Do you think I'm old enough? Look, John, it's settled, and I don't want any more bickering about it. Orson Welles is playing the part of the mad scientist in tonight's horror story. But, Rudy... Yes, Orson? We did a horror story the last time I was on your program. Orson, the last time you were on this program, we did the life of John Barrymore. That's what I mean. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> very funny, very fu- Very quaint, my fine feathered foul ball. Now, John, I'm on your side tonight. Rudy, I think John should play the mad scientist. But Austin, I mean it. You've got John playing himself tonight. Just plain John Barrymore. Really, he deserves something better than that. <laughs> now, Austin, please, a little respect. After all, John Barrymore is a big name in the theater. Thank you, Rudy. Yes, and I've heard him call the same name out of the theater. Well, you upstart, you puny, preposterous pipsqueak. Boys, boys, please, calm down. Calm down. Just enough to do a horror story. All right, Rudy. How does this horror story begin? Well, it starts out with me singing a song. It's a holly story, all right. (laughs) Go ahead. Sing, baby. Right, John. Ladies and gentlemen, at the insistence of John Barrymore, until tonight. Until tonight, that moon was never there. Until tonight, the stars were lost somewhere. Until my heart began to see this was an empty world. Until tonight I never heard a song Until tonight For when you came along, along Came love So young and bright Oh, what a thrill I missed Until For a moment, I'd like to talk to the mothers in our audience about a very important subject, the milk your family drinks. I don't need to tell you that it must be pure, wholesome, and nourishing. And here is a simple way to make sure you're getting such fine milk. Buy seal test milk, milk that is produced under the supervision of the seal test system of laboratory protection. Mr. Valley, just what is the seal test system? Seal test, Mrs. Johnson, is a network of laboratories spread out over a good part of America. 
These laboratories are staffed by scientists, chemists, and other skilled workers. Their task is to check and supervise the purity of seal test milk, ice cream, and other dairy products. But, Mr. Valley, doesn't every milk company have a laboratory? Quite possibly. The seal test companies have the benefit of an entire network of laboratories. Then seal test stands for purity, for extra care, for complete laboratory supervision. Exactly. Well, that certainly appeals to me. Uh, tell me, where can I buy seal test milk? A little later in this program, you will hear the names of the companies producing seal test milk, ice cream, and other dairy products. And, of course, you can always identify them by the red and white seal test symbol. And may I suggest that you get acquainted with the deliciousness of seal test ice cream by trying that thrilling seal test ice cream pineapple pie, which is being featured all during January. And now, our tale of the evening, wherein is related the weird and unnatural adventures of Rudy Valley and John Barrymore at the hands of the sinister Dr. Uriah Grimby Wells. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening. This is the eminent scientist, Dr. Uriah Grimby Wells. M.A., B.S., L.L.D., Ph.D., and more recently, R.K.O. I live here on a lonely estate called Carbolic Oaks, a dreary frame house set in a foggy marsh, 30 miles from civilization and 20 miles from Hollywood. Here in my laboratory, I concoct weird electrical devices calculated to inflict torture and defy the laws of nature. <laughs> there are those who call me Machiavelli, but in the words of the old Chinese proverb, they make a very big mistake. I live alone here at Carbolic Oaks with my beautiful ward, Laureen, whom I have under a hypnotic spell. She is wealthy, and I use her funds to finance my diabolical schemes. When our money is gone, I shall torture and destroy as I have all the others. <laughs> Ain't I a rat? <laughs> Here, then, is my story. I have just finished my most devilish invention, the Switchatron, which switches the personality of one human being to that of another, and I was looking for two human guinea pigs on whom to touch, test the Switchatron, when suddenly fate played into my hands, for on one desolate, rainy, stormy night, I looked from my tower and I saw the headlights of a car on the muddy road in front of Carbolic Oaks. No use, John. She's dead. Car won't start. Hey, Valley, what are we going to do? I'm dripping wet. I'm soaked to the skin. Let's get out of here before I catch my death of cold and you lose your permanent wave. Don't argue with me, Barrymore. We never would have stalled if you hadn't driven the car off the side of the road. I, I couldn't help it. You know, I've never been able to resist the soft shoulder. <laughs> it's black out here. I wonder where we are. Wait. Look. Valet, there's a house over there. An empty, I think. John, I wonder if it's safe to go in there. Does it look deserted to you? Valet? I haven't seen a house look that deserted since the last time you made a personal appearance tour. <laughs> hey, Rudy. Rudy. That, that house is haunted. John, stop shaking. After all these years? <laughs> Well, haunted or not, we can't stand here in the rain. Come on, let's walk up the driveway. Oh, I saw my two guinea pigs come sloshing up the driveway. The older one was a cadaverous-looking individual. It had curly hair. Curly hair and trouser legs. Trouser legs that came just above his knees. At first, I thought it was a Boy Scout in shorts. Until I saw it was Rudy Valley caught in the rain in one of his $12 suits. I was pleased as I saw them approach my door. For here were two perfect specimens for my switchatron. There was Valley, tall, lithe, and youthful. And beside him, his companion, every other inch a man. I hurried down as they knocked on my door. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. I bid you welcome to the house of Dr. Uriah Grimby. <laughs> well, 
Thank you. May we introduce ourselves? This is John Barrymore. I and know, I'm... I know. You are Rudy Valley of the radio. How did you know? I know everyone who haunts houses. Rudy, I don't like this place. Storm and no storm, let's get out of here. <laughs> I think you'll stay. I think we'll leave. <laughs> Mr. Barrymore, you seem worried. Are you perhaps apprehensive that this is a haunted house? Well, tell me, is it a haunted house? Are there any ghosts here? You see those nightshirts hanging in the next room? Yeah. Those are not nightshirts. Now, if you'll both come along, I'm most anxious to show you my laboratory. I don't want to know anything about your laboratory. The only thing I want to know about is when I'm going to get out of here. What do you want to know? The time or the odds? John, maybe you're right. I think there's something phony going on here. Perhaps we'd better leave. I don't think so. I think you'll want to stay after you've met my charming and beautiful ward. Miss Lorene. Oh, I'm sorry. Um... Wanted me, Master? Yes. Rudy. What a lovely creature. Yeah. But look, she stands there as she were hypnotized. She's beautiful, but, but she looks unconscious. Just your type, L.A. <laughs> look at her. Her eyes have a glassy stare. Sounds more like your type, John. Now, Lorreen, leave us, and I will show the gentleman my laboratory. Yes, master. Gentlemen, in a few moments, I shall show you the greatest of all my inventions, the fabulous switchathon. The switchathon? What's that? It's a machine by means of which I am able to switch the personality of one human being to another. Amazing. Yes, amazing. With my switchathon, you can change your personality as easy as you can change your life, Miss Blake. What's so easy about that? But you say you, uh, oh. you need two human beings. Who are you going to demonstrate it on? Ooh, I dare say I'll find someone. <laughs> <laughs> so I left my two guinea pigs in the laboratory. My senses reeled with success. My switchatron was ready for its trial. But should I go on? Should I execute my weird plan? If my switchatron worked, I would have Rudy Valley with the personality of John Barrymore and John Barrymore with the personality of Rudy Valley. Gad, it was too horrible even for me. <laughs> I decided to proceed nevertheless. I knew they wouldn't escape because of the girl, and sure enough, as soon as I left the room, Valley crept out and began walking toward the door of the music room, in which my ward, Lori, still hypnotized, sat at the piano, singing. noticing how strangely you acted a while ago. You seem to be under the spell of that cruel Dr. Wells. Cruel? Dr. Wells is my master. He is good to me. He lets me wash the dishes and scrub the floor. He even lets me shine his shoes. How kind of him. Perhaps if you're a good girl, he'll let you crawl into the fireplace and clean out the chimney. He lets me do that on my birthday. <laughs> And if I am very good, he puts the fire out first. The monster! Or if I could only release Lorene from this evil trance. Perhaps a sudden fright will bring her out of it. It has to be a terrible nerve-shattering scare. A fright that will shock her with horror. I've got it. Oh, John! Yeah, yes, sir, it is. John, you've got to help me. We were right about this girl being hypnotized. We've got to figure some way to bring her out of this trance. Rudy, just, uh, just leave her alone with me. That did it. That was the fight she needed. What happened? Where am I? Serene, you've been under an hypnotic spell. Where's Dr. Wells? Now don't worry about him. John, you go out and keep an eye on the doctor while I talk to the girl. Sally, someday I'll have my own radio show. <laughs> then you'll go out and I'll stay with the girl. <laughs> 
How did they have television? Oh, Mr. Belling, you, you must get out of this house quickly. You're in danger here. I'm not leaving without you, Lorene. Now that I've found you, no danger. No danger in the world can keep us apart. People like you were meant to me. People like you. I never knew my heart would be for people like you. I didn't know until this moment what I was waiting for. Some very special kind of angel just for me to adore. People like me were meant to love people like you. Mm -hmm. We spend our time just dreaming of people like you. Mm -hmm. I, I just found out this, this very I know that it's true That people like me Were meant to be People like you Sally, I would deem it a favor if you would come back to the laboratory and watch a little demonstration of my switchatron. <laughs> Now, Mr. Valley and Mr. Barrymore, will you please be seated in these two chairs? All right, we're seated. Where's the switch that's from? Uh, what do you plan to do with this? This page missing. Health has broken loose. Is that a page missing? Yes. Sorry. You are to be the subjects of my greatest scientific experiment. By means of this machine, the switchertron, Mr. Valley, I'm going to put your personality in Barrymore's body. And Barrymore's in your body. <laughs> You're going to put my inimitable personality into valley? Precisely. Uh, that's like putting an airplane motor into a scooter. Uh, Dr. Wells, do you mean that I'm going to have Barrymore's traits, his appetites, his, his habits? <laughs> Correct. Here goes my complexion. Not so fast, Dr. Wells. How do you know the switch in front of yours will work? I have already experimented with two of the lesser vertebrates, a snake and a rodent. I switched the characteristics of an adder and a rabbit. <laughs> the rabbit began gliding along on his stomach. What about the adder? Mm -hmm. The adder became a multiplier. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Wells, you must be mad. You can't go through with this thing. What if you switch our personalities and then find you can't switch them back again? And is that, my dear Valley, such a tragic thought, spending the rest of your life with John Barrymore? Tragic? It's staggering. Enough of this delay. <laughs> Gentlemen, when I pull this switch, 40 million volts of electricity will course through your bodies. 40 million bodies? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's magnificent. It's not enough to murder a man. hell of a good idea. <laughs> oh, wrong. <laughs> that isn't wrong. If the switchatron works, in three seconds you'll be seeing things as Barrymore sees them. If it fails, you won't see anything. I get it. Double or nothing. Now, I pull the switch. <laughs> Here we go to all of those communities where seal test milk and ice cream are sold. Ready?
Charlie and Barrymore were prisoners of the switchathon. Stark, terrible fear aged Valley's face ten years. Barrymore's face aged also, but on him it wasn't so noticeable. They could not escape. The switchathon is ready. Ready to switch Valley's personality into Barrymore and Barrymore's personality into Valley. I pulled the switch. There. Well, gentlemen, how do you feel? C- curses. <laughs> and you, my friend? I gave you a smile for a smile. <laughs> it works. It works. My switchatron works. Now, gentlemen, I realize that this experiment has been a profound shock to your nervous systems. May I prescribe a little uh, stimulant? Thank you, sir. How about you? Roll out a barrel. <laughs> it was amusing to watch Valley encased in Barrymore's body. Valley, the athlete, golfer, swimmer, tennis player, suddenly finding himself equipped only for checkers. And Barrymore in Valley's body, his rheumatism, a vanished, his lumbago, a gone. The ham was cured. I watched them fascinated listening to their conversation. Valley is Barrymore, and Barrymore is Valley. Say, John. Yes, Rudy. <laughs> John, I've never seen you look healthier. You have such red cheeks and blue eyes. It did all to you, but vice versa. Say, Rudy. Yes, John. What do you think of my acting? Well, Barrymore, I'll tell you, you're pretty hammy. There's one little habit that annoys me that you've got. Why do you always go... That, my dear Valley, is the only kind of snort I can take on the radio. <laughs> John. Yes, Rudy. Do you think I sing through my nose? Well, Rudy, I won't say that you sing through your nose, but you'd have much more volume if you were Jimmy Durante. <laughs> This time I knew that my switchatron was a success, but even I didn't realize the change that had taken place in Valley and Barrymore until my ward, Loreen, unexpectedly entered the laboratory. She ran to the man she thought was Valley. Oh, darling. Oh, I've been looking all over the house for you. Come to me, arms, my little pigeon. <laughs> What's come over you? Fly away with me, my little dove, my lovely Juliet. Ah. Juliet is the sun. Arise, fair sun, and kill the envious moon, who is already sick and pale with grief that thou were made a far more fair than she. Barrymore, you're so corny. I'll crush you to be dressed, the lovely one, and smother you with hot, burning kisses. Come, elope with me. <laughs> you're wild. You're like a mountain lion. That's me. Barrymore, the puma from Yuma. <laughs> Barrymore? But you're Rudy Valley. No, I'm Rudy Valley. And I think the way this man forces his attentions upon a lady is simply outrageous. <laughs> you, Dr. Wells, you're responsible for this horrible thing. Yes, you see before you the result of my switchatron experiment. <laughs> you fiend, how could you? I fell in love with Rudy Valley, and now you've put him into John Barrymore's body. So what? It's the content that's important, not the book. But this is such an old edition. <laughs> Don't fret, my dear. I have ever in fact, back right now. There. Themselves again. What happened? Where am I? Rudy. Rudy, don't you remember? You called me your little pigeon. You asked me to marry you, to, to elope to you. Ho, ho, ho. Something tells me me habits were switched by the switcher drawn and lost nothing in the switching. Yes, I switched them back to normal. But only to continue my experiment. You see, so far, I switched animal with animal and human with human. But now I was ready for my greatest experiment. I wanted to switch animal with human. I decided to switch Barrymore and a wolf. Then I thought that's no switch. 
<laughs> then a brilliant idea came to me. Hurriedly, I made my preparations. Dr. Wells, you demon, what diabolical evil are you planning now? Why are you putting that dog in the switchathon? That dog is going to be your ability. Uh, imagine the prestige you enjoy when he can sing trees. <laughs> oh, no, you don't. You're not getting me back in that chair. Take your hands off me. Take that. Oh, take this, Belly. Oh, wait a minute. Let me in this fight. All right, Barrymore. Take this. Wait a minute, Wells. You wouldn't hit a man with a babe in his arms. You haven't got a babe in your arms. You have to remind me. I got him, Don. I've got him here. Help me force him into the switcher trunk. Oh. We'll give him a taste of his own medicine. We'll put his dog in the other chair and switch welds with the dog. No, you can't, Rudy. Think of that poor little dog having to walk around the rest of his days with Will's personality. Yes, I guess you're right, John. What happened to him shouldn't happen to a dog. <laughs> Song for a song, for a moment sublime, right from the start. We'll have a grand time, I'll give you a dream for your dream. If you make me a part of your scheme, day by day and year by year, let's have a smile for a smile, my Thursday, John Barrymore and I will explore the jungles of darkest Africa, where we meet Congo Maisie, the white goddess of a native tribe. Our special guest will be the famous Maisie herself, beautiful and southern. Be sure to listen. And be sure to look for the red and white seal test symbol when you buy milk, ice cream, and other dairy products. To Judy Barry saying au revoir and good night. Seal Test Incorporated and its member companies are subsidiaries of the National Dairy Products Corporation.